All right, folks, weird perspective. Some people have wondered why I haven't covered sword and shield techniques on my channel before. And the reason for that is simply, I don't have a shield yet. And I do want one. So I decided to make one on my own and use the opportunity to make a how-to video for other people who are thinking about doing that. And this will be a very cheap way to do it. This right here is plywood, 9.5 millimeters thick, or 3 eighths of an inch. And um, historically they were between 6 to 12 millimeters thick, so between a quarter and half an inch thick. So this is kind of in between. And um, what they used historically was linden, which is also called basswood, pine, fir, or spruce. I simply went with plywood because, well, it's cheap. I got that entire thing plus this for $9.50. Pretty economical. As far as the diameter is concerned, the board is uh, 76.5 centimeters or 30 inches wide. And I decided to go for something a bit smaller because I, I didn't want it to be uh, bulky. It's just personal preference, basically. Uh, historically, shields have been found that were as small as 17 centimeters or 28 inches. Most were typically had an, a diameter of 80, 80 to 90 centimeters, so 32 to 36 inches. In order to draw the circle onto the board, I've measured some string right here at half the diameter, 15 inches. Put some knots in there and Put a nail through the one side. I've uh, marked the center of the board here in relation to the, the circle. And just put the nail in there. You don't actually have to use a nail. You can also just hold it. You can use two pens if you want and just hold it. But I just want to make sure that it really stays in place. And then you just put the pen in there and start drawing while keeping it nice and straight. Next I have to measure the center hole where the hand reaches in and for that it's good to take you know, gauntlets or gloves or whatever you you might wear to make sure that it fits even with those. You just take the measurement there and add just a little bit just for good measure if in doubt, just make it a bit larger, just in case. Okay, time to cut the shape. I sure won't do that with traditional tools. <laughs> I'm gonna rely on modern convenience. And of course, safety gear. In order to cut out the center hole, it's good to start with a drill and then get in with the jigsaw. I also traced the center grip on another board and now I'm going to cut that out.
next step is to cover the shield. You don't absolutely have to do that, but it really helps because by putting a layer of wood glue on there and then some kind of cloth, typically linen or a canvas, it makes it a lot sturdier simply because it prevents the wood from splitting. And also I noticed that, like I already said, the wood quality is not amazing. And from the sawing here, I got some some damage here on the edges, so it's definitely a good idea to do that. Um, historically, you would use linen, but this right here is canvas. That works too, and canvas is fairly cheap and readily available. It's easier to find than linen. And uh, a lot of people just use kind of blank cloth white or, or just kind of natural linen color and then paint it. I'm too lazy for that. <laughs> I'm just gonna go with this brown. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. It's just for training anyway. It's not for showing off. So that's gonna be fine. And we have a big ass canister of wood glue. That should definitely be enough. So the first step is to just spread it all over the place. Well, not all over the place, not in the room, but... All right, this is gonna be messy. <laughs> Huge. Mm. I think we need a bit more than that. Yeah, but you have to. Come on, give me the it. sticky stuff. Oh yeah, right in your face. <laughs> sure. Anyway, before this gets out of hand. Keeping it nice and tight. There. And now just smooth it out. Actually, we could probably use another glove. <laughs> Yeah. The uh, wood glue comes through the layers, which is good. We want that. Okay, it looks a bit crappy now, but supposedly the glue dries clear. And uh, oh, we just gonna let it sit for 24 hours. Okay, so I went ahead and put the handle onto the shield and also glued it in place with wood glue. Of course, you'll need a bit more to attach it securely. Uh, ideally with uh, iron nails, because that looks more appropriate, but they are more difficult to find, so just your regular ass nails from a uh, hardware store should suffice. Ass nails, that doesn't sound pleasant, but... Um, I wouldn't advise just hammering them in as is because then you'll just split the wood which is of course not what you want so you should drill first. That should be the right size drill. It's a bit smaller than the nail. And let's just start right here. As you can see, I cut it off a bit longer. And the idea behind that is that you can now flatten it. So 
So this is basically like a poor man's rivet. Okay, so I did the rest with the remaining nails and now I can actually hold it, but of course the hand is still unprotected. I ordered a shield boss. Got this particular one from Relics. Uh, links will be in the video description, like usual. And um, yeah, this is the easiest option. I doubt that many people would know how to make one of these themselves. Uh, if you do, feel free to, but otherwise there are plenty of manufacturers that offer these pretty cheap. You can get them for 15, 20 dollars. So I've already traced and drilled the holes and so basically the same thing again now. The next step is entirely optional, but definitely helps to make the shield more durable. Reinforcing the rim with rawhide. That helps to give it some extra strength against the sword strikes to the rim. So the cheapest source of rawhide is one of these. One of those dog chew toys. And uh, you just soak it in water overnight and then cut it into strips. While it's soaked, it's very flexible, as you can see, easy to work with, and then it hardens quite a bit as it dries. Uh, it also uh, contracts as it dries, so you need to make sure that you fix it in place and use clamps to make sure that it's flat against the wood on either side, otherwise it will curl up while drying. So all I did was to put on the raw hide, put a nail through and hammer it down on the other side. No need to cut it off in this place. And in fact, it holds a bit better if you uh, bend it over like that. And uh, in that case, you don't have to drill holes beforehand because if you're using fairly uh, thin nails, not really a problem. If you have more clamps, you can do the entire shield at once, but I don't. so. I'll have to go with this first and let it dry, take off the clamps and uh, do the next strip. And there it is. Not exactly a masterpiece of art, <laughs> but it is functional. Uh, you could make it a lot cleaner by uh, taking care to make sure that the, the glue is all smooth before it dries, because there are just some spots where, where we had excess glue which then dried and you know it looks a bit dirty but then again <laughs> with practice it will anyway and uh, I purposely left part of it uncovered in order to test it to test the difference between uh, rawhide covering and you know just the canvas cover and uh, by the way I decided to not use the nails after all to secure it in place. Yeah, I, I know screws don't exactly look historically accurate, but then again, the nail heads didn't look either. They actually look pretty out of place. Those, you know, at least they have the round shape of rivets. Basically, the only extra step was to cut off the bolts so that they are more or less flush with the nut. Whereas with the nails, well, at first I tried to just hammer them down, bend them over, but that didn't work too well because the nails were so thick. And uh, trying to do the uh, nail peening as before, that doesn't really work so well because of the shape of the boss. It's, it's difficult to get to them. But, you know, the way it is, it works. So now let's try it out. Okay, so the cut at the reinforced rim is not quite as long as the one without reinforcement, even though the, the, the difference is not that big. But the main difference that you see here is that it's splintered like crazy here. And that's what the reinforcement helps against. There's also some splintering, but not as much as on the other side. 
even though it still kind of surprised me how easily the sword cut into it. Goes to show that the wood is really not good quality. And definitely you see the effect that the canvas cover has. Right here uncovered, it's all splintered. Whereas here, this is a pretty clean cut. So the canvas clearly prevents that.